You're good to go, Scott. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, let's get it started. Good evening and welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is Monday, February 15th, and this is our regularly scheduled Board of Agenda meeting. I'm sorry, Board of Education meeting. Um, thanks again for joining us. Before we move any further, would you all please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> The United, United States, States, States of America, America. Republic, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God, under God indivisible, indivisible, liberty and justice, for, justice, for, all. justice for, all. for all. Thank you. That's always a little <laughs> tricky with the lag between all the voices. Um, okay, Pam, we please take roll. Absolutely. President McFarland. Here. Vice President Roush. Here. Secretary Singer is here. Treasurer Lauterbach. John, are you there? He was He's there. Yeah, he I, was. I, yeah, I can't. I can't unmute myself. Sorry. No, okay. Member Baker, here. A member Blazy, here. And member Hatfield, here. And we are all here, all present. Fantastic. Thank you very much. All right, jumping right into our consent agenda, we have item 2.1 is approval of the meeting minutes from January 11, 2021 organizational 11. meeting. 20, January 11th, 2021. Was there a question? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, maybe I got some feedback on that and, and I just didn't hear it. Uh, item 2.2 is approval of the meeting minutes from January 11, 2021, the regular, regular meeting. Item 2.3 is approval of the meeting minutes from January 21, 2021, special meeting. Item 2.4, the below staff member announced their resignation, effective February 2nd, 2021. That was Leah Grinwis, a paraprofessional from Central Park Elementary. Item 2.5, uh, the below are recommended for employment. Uh, we have Sarah Stars as a speech language pathologist for special services. We have Justin Page, Electronic Learning Facilitator for the Virtual Academy. Um, item 2.6 is approval of the payment of the school system's bills for the month of December as listed in the check registers prepared by Ms. Holderby in the total amount of $9,910,580. The distribution of obligations by fund is included in the documentation. Item 2.7 is approval uh, to authorize legal payments to Thrun Law Firm in the amount of $1,251.50. I move, this is Pam, I move to approve the consent agenda item 2.1 through 2.7. Support. Motion by Pam, support by Phil. Any discussion regarding items 2.1 through 2.7? All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, next up, we have item 3.1. These are presentations to the board. We have the career and technical education highlights. This is Dr. Poole and team. Okay, um, Penny's going to start it, and we'll just go with a little bit of a discussion. It may not be the presentation we had planned for you, um, so we're going to wing this a little bit for you. Board members, start with Penny. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy to share with you that February 2021 is Career and Technical Education Month. Midland Public Schools is proud to offer CTE programs like the ones you're going to hear about tonight in the areas of business, accounting, and marketing. We also have really successful CTE programs in the areas of building trades, welding, automotive, healthcare tech, engineering, family and consumer science, and woodworking. You may know that through our CTE consortium at the county level, many of our programs are open to students from throughout the county, and our students also have access to additional programs such as agri-science, culinary arts, education, and skilled trades. CTE offers our students opportunities to explore career options, earn college credit, 
prepare for industry certifications and gain valuable academic and technical skills in high wage, high skill, in demand areas. The courses and connected student organizations that you'll hear about tonight also equip our students to enter the workforce and post-secondary education with the transversal skills that they need for success and to become leaders in our workforce. We're pleased to celebrate CTE tonight and to highlight a few of our amazing programs. I know that Steve Poole is with us. Uh, he serves as our CTE administrator, but I believe we're gonna transition directly to the teachers who will uh, facilitate our presentation tonight. And that would be me. So, hi, I'm Erin Royalty, and can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. yes. Great. Um, so I am one of the business teachers at Dow High School, and as Penny mentioned, um, there's many uh, avenues in CTE that a student can pursue. Um, specifically, we're talking about the business pathway tonight, and that's actually split into two clusters. Um, one cluster being marketing and the other being um, business, administration, and technology. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about marketing, um, and then Jacob Fox from Midland High will talk to you about the business uh, administration and technology side. But uh, the classes we're talking about tonight are offered at both high schools. And really, um, the ultimate goal of all of our business classes is that students walk away with tangible skills that they can use in their future, whether they um, attend college, pursue a trade, or jump right into the workforce after high school. Um, so is it okay for me to share my screen now, or do you want me just to skip that completely, Penny? We're, we're going to skip that, Erin. Sorry about that. So. Well, that's all right. That's all right. So um, a student interested in the marketing uh, career pathway begins that journey by taking marketing, and our marketing classes are very project-based. And one of the biggest projects we do um, is the Make-A-Wish project. And in that project, students um, develop a business and they sell a good or a service. Um, throughout this project, they learn about all of the aspects of uh, owning and running a business. Um, and at the end of the project, um, at the conclusion, all of the profits that are made during um, the project are donated to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So. Um, in previous years, we've donated uh, sometimes as much as six or eight thousand dollars to the Make a Wish Foundation, um, which is a really great amount. The kids love it. Um, typically, we have somebody come in from the Make a Wish Foundation and to talk to the kids about what the foundation does. And so, it's really a project that um, the students learn a lot, but then they also gain a lot because they're giving back to uh, someone else. And, and so, that's always a feel good. The other big project we do in marketing is a career readiness unit. <laughs> and students develop a resume, a career portfolio, and then they participate in a mock interview. Um, and so this is a great thing that students can use in their future. <clears throat> the portfolio, um, once it's created, all they have to do is keep it updated. Um, and so I always have students come back to me, you know, several years later saying, hey, I'm still using that career portfolio we created way back in marketing. So I know it's a valuable tool for them. Um, students who take marketing as a junior or senior can earn Delta College credit, um, and seniors who take uh, marketing can count that as their fourth year math credit. So a lot of great things happening with that course. Students who then continue on to the next step in the pathway take sales and merchandising. And at Dow High School, when you take sales and merchandising, you're, giving, you're given the opportunity to work in the school store. And so that's a very practical, hands-on learning experience. Um, students learn all about sales tech techniques, advertising, promotion. They learn how to run the point of sale system, count back change. Um, and the big uh, project in that class is um, organizing and running the prom fashion show in the spring. And that runs during both lunch hours um, during the school day. And so that's always really fun for the students to organize. They like to MC it. They like to be models in it. And so it's just a really fun time to see their skills shine. Um, students can learn, earn Delta College credit uh, for these courses as well. And um, so it's, again, just contributing to their future uh, career goals, hopefully. And then finally, um, all current and former business students at Dow High School can participate in the DECA Club. Um, it's uh, the second largest club at Dow High School. This year we have a historic uh, membership of 119 members, so that is huge. 
Um, it's a competitive business club for students. They take a written exam and then they compete in a role play event where they're given a scenario with a business uh, situation or problem. They have 10 minutes to prepare their solution and then they present that solution to a judge. Um, so as you can imagine, they develop uh, a lot of skills in this uh, club where they learn to think on their feet, um, present their ideas professionally, come up with creative solutions. It's a great opportunity to network with uh, other students from um, our state and then if they make it on to the national level, um, students from other states as well. But, um, you know, these, my, my words are boring uh, compared to what my students are going to share. Um, and so I'm going to introduce to you Mark Van Heel and Olivia Miller. Um, they're going to uh, take some time here and tell you what they've gained from uh, taking business classes and um, participating in DECA. So I'm going to turn it over to Mark and he's going to start. So go ahead. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Mark Van Heel, as she said, and I'm a senior at Dow High right now. Um, and I took marketing as a junior or so last year. And really from the first week I was in that class, I absolutely loved how we got to exercise the creative thinking and learning how to communicate effectively the messages that we, you know, we wanted to do. And also the business side of that, because I've always had an interest in business and I have always been an out of the box thinker and I'd finally found a way to connect the two. So one of the, my favorite things that we did in that class was the Make-A-Wish project, um, like Ms. Royalty mentioned. And I actually got to create my own fudge business that was quite a hit in Dow High. Um, I, it was interesting to learn the social media side of marketing because we used that the most to reach the students who were our main target audience. Uh, but also the power of word of mouth became very apparent uh, throughout that project. And it was always for a good cause, so it was a ton of fun to do. Uh, another thing that was really helpful for marketing class was that I got to create my own resume and really start to put thought into the things that I want to include and the things that I want to present to people once I'm in the professional world and going towards jobs, internships, well, you have it. Uh, and I've, I've used that multiple times as a template since then, including for an, uh, a personal project with a local marketing firm that is kind of just to dip my toes into the, the marketing field because I've caught such an interest from my marketing class with Ms. Majestic. Uh, and then another great pathway that marketing opened up for me was to DECA. I always heard about it on the announcements, but never really knew what was it, what it was about until we had these presentations come into class and I decided to join. But I will leave off there and I will let Olivia talk more about DECA. Thank you. So my name is Olivia Miller. I'm a senior at Dow High. I am a former charger shop manager and the current Dow High DECA president. I'm very involved as a student Within our marketing education programs, I'm originally from a small private school and I chose to move into Midland Public Schools and specifically School of Choice to Dow High for the DECA chapter. I was really interested in getting involved within the business side of education. So I joined DECA my freshman year, I've been ever since, as well as I've taken a business class, so marketing, sales, advanced business, uh, every year of my high school career. Starting with the charger shop, like she was saying, uh, Ms. Royalty was saying, there is a lot of real-world experience that you're getting in that. So my first year, I, when I took sales one, I was a sophomore. So I was selling the merchandise and spirit wear and food, getting a lot of uh, customer experience. I was restocking, cleaning, and I learned how to work with point-of-sale system. All of those which contributed to my first job, which I got over two summers ago, uh, businesses really like to see that you have that work experience, which is something that's super difficult for students to attain, attain so early on, but the charter shop was an experience uh, that allowed me to do so. And then I came back the next year as a manager and worked with a team of five other managers. And then I was getting to see more of the side of business that I was really eager to see and that I was trying to pursue within my own career later on in life, but down on a smaller scale. So I was ordering stock, uh, designing the merchandise, I was training the employees, and so it was kind of cool to see where I had started and grown from there. And really, 
uh, it was just such a cool opportunity to get that real world real world experience and a taste for what it's like the inner workings of a small business. And then additionally, DECA, I, like I said, joined my freshman year and I was enjoying it. I really liked the business aspect of it. And I thought it was super cool to be thinking on my feet and presenting to people. I'm super competitive naturally. So it was super exciting to be doing that and competing. And I was fortunate enough my freshman year to make it to the international competition. And after being in Atlanta, Georgia, where we competed, I absolutely fell in love with the program. You seriously could not get me to stop talking about it. I'm pretty sure I convinced 10 of my friends to join just so they didn't have to hear me say any more about DECA. <laughs> so huge advocate for the program. Uh, I was meeting new people. Uh, one of my absolute closest friends, Karis, I met on the state bus ride and we were the only two freshmen at States. So I was kind of forced to talk to this girl who I had never met and uh, maybe someone who I'm, might have never crossed paths with, path with otherwise is one of my absolute closest friends now. Additionally, I was meeting seniors and talking to them and having fun and playing games with them at our state's game nights. Again, all people who I would never have met otherwise and am still in contact with. Not to mention, there's plenty of opportunities that I've had due to DECA. I was involved with the school store paper, which is a written piece that connects with the charger shop. So they were very intertwined. Uh, I did the chapter award scrapbook where we talk about all of the volunteer tiering that we did, the competition, preparing our members for states. Uh, and I also campaigned at a state level for Michigan DECA. Something we always say is that no one regrets joining, but everyone regrets not joining sooner. So if someone's just finally joining their junior or their senior years, they always say, man, I wish I joined freshman year. And I was like, yeah, you do. Like every year you could get a DECA is such a great opportunity and something that I love the absolute most about DECA is that there's no kind of student who's going to be a good fit for it because we have every kind of student across the school. Like she said, it's a huge club, a um, hundred members, and we have kids from all areas of the school. You're meeting people that maybe you never have in classes or have different interests than you. I'm personally very business oriented, but there's plenty of students who want to go into a medicine field or something completely different and just enjoy the fun of it. So it's such a wide and diverse group of students that it's been so fun leading them and meeting them and uh, competing with them. So personally, I could not be a bigger advocate for the business education opportunities at Dow High School. They've been an unmet experience in my high school uh, education. It's something that I'll look fondly back upon as I'm moving into college. And something that I know high school students always complain about is that we're in our classes, maybe like cranking integrals and calculus, but nothing feels like it's applying to our lives. But when you're in the charger shop selling people and working with customers, or you're at DECA and you're competing and working on these real life scenarios, you feel like you're really getting something out of your high school experience, which I think is just so rewarding in itself that it's something that I truly believe every student should be involved with in some aspect. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm sure we're open. Otherwise, Mr. Fox can. Uh, take over. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for allowing us to present tonight. Um, so uh, like Olivia just said, my name is Jacob Fox, um, and I teach advanced business and computer tech over at Midland High School, uh, where I'm also the Business Professionals of America advisor. Um, so with the first class I teach uh, computer technology, uh, we focus a lot on just kind of the basic computer skills that students are going to need uh, once they leave high school and they join the workforce. Um, and we've seen, you know, with COVID, how much technology is creeping more and more into the workforce. So I feel like this class is uh, more important than ever. Um, we also focus a lot on the Microsoft Office program. So we look a lot at Excel and Word and PowerPoint. Um, we also get into some of the graphic design programs like Publisher and Photoshop, Illustrator. Um, but we try and make sure that every project that we do um, is hands-on and that it's going to be similar to what students are going to see and ex experience, you know, once, once they leave high school and join the workforce. Um, another big plus with computer tech is students have the opportunity to take the Microsoft Office Specialist exam in uh, Word and Excel. Um, and if they pass that exam, uh, that looks great on a resume. It's great evidence to future employers that students have mastered these uh, skills and techniques. 
Um, and I know for sure um, that many, many students have, that's been a, a game changer for them when they've went to apply for internships and jobs uh, after high school. It really sets them apart from a lot of their peers. Um, another big plus with computer tech is that it also offers Delta College uh, articulation. So if students do well in the class and if they pass their Word and Excel uh, Microsoft Office Specialist exam, they can earn uh, Delta College articulation credit. Um, so the other class that I teach is advanced business. Um, so once students complete computer tech one and computer tech two, advanced business is kind of the next class on that pathway. Um, what's cool about advanced business is it is a blended course. So we utilize a flipped classroom model. So students are doing all the front loading work, all the background knowledge on their own online. And then when they come into class, we can focus on enrichment activities where students are presenting, they're working in teams, uh, they're looking at a lot of case studies. Um, we use those quite often where students are looking at, you know, a real life scenario or problem, and then they're asked to kind of apply the concepts and knowledge they've learned in class to uh, a real life scenario. And advanced business also offers uh, Delta College articulation credit. So if students do well, they can transfer that credit over to Delta. So big fan of advanced business. Um, and then the last thing I'll talk about before I turn it over to uh, my student Ryan Hampton is uh, BPA, Business Professionals of America. Um, it's very similar to DECA um, in the sense that students are competing against other students from different schools. Uh, they're focusing on business and technology uh, competitions. They're also faced with you know, some sort of problem or scenario. They're asked to solve that problem or scenario in teams or individually and then present that solution to judges. So it's, it's very similar to DECA. Um, students love the hands-on experience. They love the real life experience that they get. Um, they love the network um, and hopefully build some relationships with their classmates, but also students and teachers from other schools too, and hopefully build some lifelong relationships that they can use you know, in their future careers. Um, and I'll go ahead and let uh, my student, Ryan Hampton, he's gonna talk a bit more about his experiences um, in advanced business and computer tech. So thank you. Go ahead, Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Fox. So I'm Ryan Hampton. I'm a senior at Midland High. I'm the current vice president of communications at, with BPA. Um, I'll first talk about computer tech. So it's very focused on business administration and the raw computer skills, like learning how to use Microsoft Access, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, and all these are great skills to have for any class that you're currently in and for college and for so on with life. Because if you can master one computer program, it helps you understand all the other computer programs you may use, such as the Google products being Google Docs, Google uh, Slides, or anything like that. Um, I also thought career development was a big focus of computer tech and making a career portfolio and an online portfolio similar to the marketing classes at Dow. But um, learning how to format a letter, like a business letter and website building have also been useful things I've learned from that class. Um, and overall, I thought computer tech helped me become a lot more efficient in formatting projects and papers for other classes and get higher grades and look more professional. So I also want to talk about advanced business, which I'm currently taking. Uh, it's a follow-up to computer tech, and the projects are focused on presentation skills. And we do recorded presentations, too, which I found to be useful to learn how to talk on a computer as opposed to talking in front of people, since everything's going more remote and doing interviews remote and taking classes remote. It's important to learn how to talk in front of a camera as opposed to an audience. Um, I also found that dealing with adversity has been a big theme of advanced business because technology always has issues and learning how to work around those issues. And the more you learn about technology, the better you can handle issues that come up in day-to-day -day life. Um, Self-reflection and interpersonal skills are also big parts of advanced business, I feel, in that you kind of focus on what you may want to go into for business or what section you may fit in best, whether it be managerial positions or business administration or whatever you may want to go into. Um, so I will turn this over to my fellow senior, Jarrett Wagner, who is our BPA president, and you can take it from there. Hi, so yeah, I'm Jarrett Wagner, the current president of BPA at Middle High. 
And BPA is really just a business club like DECA where I feel like it's more focused on like in front presentations, like is which I'm a part of. So I'm part of what's called the global marketing team where I serve as the financial specialist. So I'm tasked with like um, a business scenario where I have to expand the business first domestically and then internationally. So I'm the financial advisor of that. So I develop all the financials, target goals, profit margins, et cetera. And this has led a lot to me um, continuing my education at Northwood University, where I will also be playing football and just um, participating in the four-year MBA program. Uh, this helps a lot because Northwood, or I'm sorry, BPA really extended my knowledge into this field and really raised my interest where I feel like I would not have gotten uh, anywhere else. And the diversity of BPA, just the all types of students that um, gathers, like Olivia said with DECA, it's just insane. I've met so many different types of people through BPA because I started at my sophomore year. I got a late start. And I just really met a lot of different people where I would not have talked to. We've been very successful in the past. We usually have around 80 members. And this year, we, due to COVID, we have a low about 50. But of this 50, we have 40 members moving on to the state competition, where I expect a lot more moving on to the national competition as usual. Mr. Fox, I don't know if you have anything else you would like to add, but that's all from me. No, you guys said it. Uh, thank you so much. Um, we did just want to open it up to the board to see if you guys had any questions or anything you wanted to follow up on. But thank you so much for your time. I really, really all appreciate it. Thank you. I have a question. Absolutely. So this is Pam Singer. And I'm wondering if you can tell me a little bit about the Delta credits and how many students go go for those Delta credits that are in these, uh, take advantage of these opportunities. Um, so may, I don't know if Aaron would be better suited to answer this question. This is actually my first year. So I guess I'm not really sure on those numbers. So I don't know if Aaron would maybe have a better insight into that. No problem at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would say every year, I probably have about 25 students who take advantage of that. Um, Unfortunately, the credits only count for Delta. Um, and so if a student isn't planning on taking a course at Delta, um, they usually don't have me complete the paperwork for mm -hmm. them. Um, however, I've had students who uh, end up in the future deciding to take a, a class at Delta in the summertime. Uh, and so they'll come back to me and say, okay, well, you know, I've changed my mind. I'm taking some classes at Delta. Can you get that paperwork taken care of? As long as it's been uh, no more than two years, uh, the, the credit is still theirs to, to have. So um, I would say, yeah, about 25 a year from Dow High. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I have a, a question, um, maybe more of a, a general comment. This is Scott. Uh, this is for Mark, Olivia, Ryan, and Jarrett. Um, I just wanna tell the four of you that you are excellent, excellent orators. Your, your presentation skills, uh, I think, are some of the best I've seen from our students. And all of you have suggested in, in some way, shape, or form that starting early is the best. Um, Olivia, your club is at, a, 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 a I think, an all-time high of 119 members. And Jared, yours is, is kind of hovering around 50. Um, what are you guys doing to recruit uh, freshmen, I guess, if freshmen are the, the, the people that you want to get more involved in this in this club. Of course, I can go first, if that's all right. So my freshman year, like I said, going to state, there was only myself and one other freshman, so our numbers were super low for that. And that year, we started going to Jefferson, and we would do a Jefferson Deca Day, where we would get them introduced to the club uh, and give them the idea of coming along and you know, having fun. We did many games, like our game nights, gave them all the best parts of DECA to get them more excited. And something else that I think, at least the trend that I've seen a lot, I took deck, uh, took marketing my freshman year. And when I was taking it, it was mostly juniors and seniors in the class with me. But now you'll see probably a majority of freshmen coming in, taking some sort of business class. And I think a piece of that is just how strong the programs are. So within DECA, uh, word of mouth spreads really quickly. So our state competitions are so much fun. Our international competitions, uh, the students just really enjoy 
And people are recruiting their friends almost on their own. Like it's almost as if we don't have to do the work because they love them so much. And I think the same stands for our business classes that kids talk about the class, make a wish problem uh, projects. They see them, you know, advertising in the hallways and they're like, wow, that's so cool. So I think just the sheer amount of opportunities that it presents becomes so prevalent within the school environment that it's almost doing, doing it on its own. They just keep uh, drawing in more and more students. Yeah, so for BPA, BPA is very well known around Midland High School. A lot of people are involved in it and just it's a lot of word of mouth, uh, like recruiting. So like the closest class you're closest with is going to be your class, the class above you and the class below you. So we do a lot of like I recruited our current junior class a lot. So did Ryan. Uh, they recruited a lot of our sophomore class who's recruited a lot of our freshman class. So it's kind of just a it's like trickle down. Like everyone knows everyone that, that's in the grade below them. And it's just a lot of recruit your friends and We've gotten a lot of people coming from that. Okay. Well, it sounds like you guys are doing a great job. Thank you very much. And, and please keep up the, the outstanding work. Um, we really, I really enjoyed your presentation tonight. I'll open the floor back up to any other board members. Thank you very much. This is John Hatfield. I have a question is, and it's probably for the teachers. Is there a reason that DECA is at Dow and BPA is at Midland. Is it historical or? Uh, I can, I can speak the... to that. <laughs> um, okay. So originally both schools had both clubs and okay. um, for whatever reason, uh, BPA really grew at Midland High. Um, five years ago when I started at Dow High, um, they had BPA, but there were only 12 members. Uh, and at that time, I think our DECA club was somewhere around uh, 70 members. And so um, prior to being hired uh, at Midland Public Schools, I had been um, helping run the DECA club um, anyway. So uh, when I was hired in, it didn't make sense for me to leave DECA uh, for the BPA club of 12. So we absorbed those 12 members into DECA and just uh, have grown the club that way um, from them forward. And uh, the, the history of DECA at Midland High has been kind of up and down. Uh, they typically had around 20 members. Um, I think last year, maybe they had about 25, um, but it kind of ebbs and flows. And so BPA is just sort of what the kids have gravitated to over at Midland High. And so um, it's kind of hard to support large clubs at one level. Okay. Thank you very much. The chip fell. <laughs> okay. That's helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, I folks. A, oh, I'm sorry, Brad, go ahead. I got a, I have a question for Jacob and for Aaron. Um, are there other opportunities to get these students in front of uh, other business entities in the Great Lakes Bay region? I know in the, the, charger shop as a, as a business experience, but, and they're also doing all kinds of competitions, whether it be DECA or BPA, um, are they exposed to the multitude of business opportunities and businesses and diverse businesses that we have here uh, just in Midland? Yeah, I, um, I'm not involved in this program uh, directly. Um, Elizabeth Marsh uh, runs the program at Midland High, but I know a lot of students, they do co-ops. Um, so if students are interested in a particular field, you know, the health field or business field or, you know, what have you, um, Elizabeth Marsh works on uh, placing these kids into businesses around the Midland area. Um, so students are actually working and they get paid for it. They're working out in businesses part-time and then they also go to school part-time. So they're actually you know, working, getting those real life experiences and actually making money. Um, and that's kind of the biggest outreach I've, I've seen so far. Um, but I'd also like to do some more of that in my advanced business class, you know, finding ways to maybe get kids presenting in front of other businesses or maybe, you know, bringing um, some presenters even into class. Um, so that's definitely something I'd like to incorporate um, in the future. But I know the co-op program is, is really popular and that's probably the best way students are, are getting out there right now. Yeah. Um, we have Dow High students that, that co-op as well. Um, and then in addition to that, at least, um, I don't, I'm not sure what they're doing at Midland High, but um, we're involved with the JA program, 
uh, which brings in a lot of different guest speakers to our classes. Um, and we've had local business owners come in and talk about different business um, topics and business careers with students. Um, for me, I think anytime I can bring someone from the outside in uh, to speak or talk to the students, um, it's a valuable experience for them because they're hearing somebody's uh, experience besides me. Um, and sometimes uh, that carries a lot more weight. Um, and then in the sales classes, um, we do a project, uh, it's called the Advertising Campaign Project. And historically we have partnered students with local small businesses that maybe are just starting out. Um, and with that business, they create uh, a goal. Uh, maybe the business would like to expand or increase sales. Um, and the students work with that business to create an advertising campaign. Um, they interview the business owner for information. They come back to the school and for several weeks work on their campaign. Um, and then in the end of the project, they present their campaign to the business. So, um, you know, it's just a, a good opportunity for them to get some face time with local business leaders and owners. Okay. Great question, Brad, thanks. Anybody else? Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate your time and uh, good luck moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That will bring us to item 3.2, uh, Mike with the Shining Stars. Mike? Sorry about that. I was, okay. I was talking through my mask. You probably couldn't even see nor hear me. How's that? <laughs> right, that'll work. <laughs> yeah. We have our two shining stars online, is my understanding. And so as I read about them, you can congratulate them afterwards. So our first shining star is Kay Moyers. Uh, Ms. Moyer joined the MPS team in 2018 as a paraprofessional at Central Park Elementary School. Kay, Kay earned her Bachelor's of Science degree from East Carolina University and her Master's degree from Southeastern Baptist Theo Theological Seminary. She has held a teaching certificate in early childhood and reading. Kay was nominated for her Shining Star by a Central Park colleague. Among her comments were the following. Kay was placed in the second grade classroom in the beginning of the 2021 school year. Due to class sizes, she was moved to kindergarten classroom after the holiday break. Even though it may not have been her first choice for placement, she has stepped in, gone above and beyond what is expected of her. She creates interventions for targeted students during her breaks, supports the students with the most emotional needs by getting to know them, and takes the time to walk around and greet each child when she enters the classroom. She takes the initiative and supports our learning goals in the classroom by creating her own mini learning goal board in our maker space and takes every opportunity to meet each child through the week for additional one-on-one -on -one support regardless of the need without me asking. She is an asset at Central Park Elementary and the staff here at Central Park are extremely appreciative of her efforts. Congratulations Kay. Congratulations Kay. Our second shining star is Amy Rye Fisher. Amy joined the MPS team in 1988 as a first grade teacher at East Lawn Elementary School. Today, Amy teaches kindergarten at Plymouth Elementary. During her MPS tenure, in addition to teaching first grade and kindergarten, Amy has served as a Title I reading recovery teacher, K2 ELA teacher, leader, and Young Fives teacher. Amy earned her Bachelor's of Science degree from Central Michigan University and her Master's degree from Saginaw Valley State University. Amy was nominated for a shining star, by, shining star by several Plymouth parents. Among their comments were the following. Ms. Rye Fisher is an amazing kindergarten teacher. She makes sure each one of her students are learning at their pace. If one doesn't work for them, she tries different approaches to make sure your kindergartner stays on track. Her communication with her parents during these uncertain times have been beyond what I could hope for. She's one of the kindest teachers I have come across. My daughter had her tonsils out during holiday break. Ms. Rye Fisher video chatted with my daughter before her surgery, stopped by our home with a smoothie and some worksheets for her to work on during, due to the missing of two, to two days of school. Our child and others in the class had to quarantine after being identified as close contacts. 
during the time for impromptu virtual learning lessons for half of the class. Ms. Wright Fisher maintained a positive attitude. She even did multiple drop-off of books packets to each student that had to learn remotely, all, of her pers- all on her personal time. We're so thankful to have her as our child's teacher this year. Congratulations, Amy. Congratulations, Amy. Congrats. Congratulations. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, that brings us to item number four, request to address the board. And to the best of my knowledge, there are none at this point. Um, so we're gonna keep moving. That takes us to item number five, curriculum instruction and assessment. We have Lynn with minutes. Yes, let me pull those up. I think I can find those. You know what? I'm having a hard time pulling them up. Is it possible for um, someone else to read those? Yeah. Do you want us? Penny's yeah, got it. Somebody else. I'm trying to use my phone, and it's and it's disappeared. And you got it. When we got you covered, Penny will pick that up okay. for the CIA team and read them out. Thank you. Absolutely. We met on January 18th. And uh, the first topic was MPS well-being, and Sheffer provided an update on the district's well-being activities, including the current partnership with The Rock Center for Youth Development and the grant through the Midland Area Community Foundation to advance well-being for adults and students. This focus also aligns with the Michigan Department of Education's whole child framework and the work of the Midland County Well-Being Coalition that includes a shared desire to be an exceptional place where everyone thrives. We then moved on to look at the Virtual Academy for an update. Uh, Penny provided a brief update on the Virtual Academy, Academy enrollment as the district enters semester two. We discussed the challenges and the successes. Finally, we ended with a DEI update where Amy Beasley and Penny updated the committee on the status of the project teams and the onboarding of DeAndre Hogan as our new DEI director. MPS is excited to welcome DeAndre to the team It was also announced that a request for proposal has been issued seeking external organizations to conduct an equity audit. We adjourned at 245, and our next meeting was actually today, February 15th. All right. Thank you, Penny. Mm -hmm. And if you wouldn't mind, let's just move right into 5.2. Sure thing. Uh, These slides are likely looking familiar to you uh, in all their plainness. Uh, but they they serve the purpose. Uh, As usual, we need to conduct our reconfirmation, our monthly reconfirmation of the extended COVID-19 learning plan. All right, I swear to you that it's on this time. Thank you. Um, Per usual, uh, the first step is to reconfirm our instructional delivery and there have been no modifications to the written plan. We're pleased that all of our students are back in their face-to-face in-person learning mode and those who were originally enrolled in virtual remain in virtual. Next slide, please. Uh, This slide has actually been updated to reflect our semester two enrollment. You'll note that the categories are 100% remote for student enrollment and then our students who are not 100% enrollment. You'll see in parentheses for each category that I've reminded us of what our semester one enrollment was. So we have had uh, some changes, certainly in students receiving special education services. We're at 24% uh, and 76% respectively are economically disadvantaged. We have 29% in 100% remote learning and 71 uh, in face-to-face or hybrid. And finally, our English language learners are 36% and 64% respectively. Next slide, please. We, every month, report a summary of the public comments we have received, and thanks to Cindy Young, we collect these. We have three to share with you. The first is that we did have a request to consider the status of honor roll for this year due to our learning and virtual learning environment and COVID overall. We had a concern that virtual students are struggling to feel part of the school system. 
And finally, we had appreciation expressed for continuing to offer the virtual learning options in semester two. I'll turn this over to Jeff to walk us through the two-way interaction rates. Thanks, Penny. Tonight's attendance update includes the weekly two-way interaction percentages for the past five weeks, beginning the week of January 10th. And I think tonight I'll just uh, go through each column separately to speed that up. So column one is the percentages for all students. The week of January 10th, that was 90%. Week of January 17th, 95. Week of January 24th, 96. Week of January 31st, 96. And the chart shows 94% for the week of 2-7, but um, I checked just before the meeting, and that will be updated to 96%. Teachers have a 10-day window to make corrections, so sometimes these do adjust. Uh, the 100% remote column, going back to the week of January 10th, 71%. The week of January 17th, 84 The week of January 24th, 88 The week of January 31st, 93 Last week, again, listed at 79, that will be adjusted to 87. And then the final column, those that are not 100% remote, the week of January 10th, it was 89%. The week of January 17th, 97. The week of January 24th, 98. The week of January 31st, 96. Um, currently, the, the last week shows 94. That will be adjusted to 95%. This month we have an addition to the monthly report. If you'll remember when we first introduced Public Act 149 for the extended COVID learning plan, we were required to establish student proficiency or growth goal areas, and that was dependent upon a benchmark assessment. We opted to, to use NWEA, and so I'm reminding you tonight that our two goal areas are such that we would uh, look for improvement in performance in ELA from fall to winter and then again to spring as measured by NWEA map growth or reading fluency. And our second goal is the same, but applying in the math area. I'll share with you tonight, next slide please, the data that we have to report regarding this. I'll remind you that this is mid-year data. The spirit of this data is really to inform instruction at the classroom level. So teachers are digging into these mid-year reports and really using that uh, to, to support individual <coughs> student learning and growth. You'll see that the reporting category uh, is present. We needed to disaggregate that based on the Public Act requirements. And the percentage that you see on your screen is simply the percentage of students who showed growth from their initial fall assessment to this midpoint. All students are at 72.9%, and you'll see that we do have some spots where we're gonna dig a little bit deeper. Our students who are enrolled in 100% remote are a little less than our all student amount at 69.2%. And then we have our indigenous American Indian or native Alaskan uh, subgroup that is around 50%. So we'll take a little bit closer look at that, but again, in the spirit of this being mid-year. Next slide, please. This is the exact same layout, but it applies to the math goal. And again, you'll see all students at 82.8%. Again, it's the percent of students who showed growth from assessment one to assessment two. And again, we'll take a little bit deeper uh, dig into the areas that are slightly lower. You'll note the uh, asterisks for the Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander on both of those. We don't report that out because there are less than 10 students and it's a, a student privacy issue. So that is the summary of our mid-year goal report. These will be posted to our website per Public Act 149. And we'll be back with you in June for the final report and that's where we'll spend a little more time uh, making meaning of this data and really giving you a, a more detailed snapshot of where we are as a district. So that is for action, Mr. McFarland. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, both Penny and Jeff, for all your hard work in putting this data together for us. And with that, I will uh, accept the motion. Make a motion to approve item. 
Yes, it's 5.2. Support. Motion by Phil, support by John. Any further discussion regarding item 5.2? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries, thank you very much. All right, moving on, we are at item 6.1. This is finance facilities and operations and we have John with the minutes. Thanks, Scott. Uh, the committee met on February 1st and we reviewed the December financials. Um, I should say at the outset, there is a typo in this paragraph. Uh, it says December 2020 expenditures were up in comparison to December 2020. That should read December 2019. This is due to an additional payroll, the payout of virtual teaching stipends and other COVID-19 related expenditures. Um, we also discussed that uh, I was confirmed by the committee as chair for the current year. We discussed the performance contract energy bond update, an updated timeline of events was shared with the committee. Uh, we discussed MCEA bargaining. Bargaining with the teacher association began on January 27th. Progress will be shared with the committee as talks progress. Uh, tonight, we will be um, uh, voting on the recommendation for the purchase of 2,600 Dell Chromebooks for high school students. If adopted, this action will replace devices purchased in 2016. Series two bond funds will be utilized if approved. Bids were also solicited for the purchase of four new buses. The administration will recommend uh, the award to Midwest Transit and bond funds will be utilized for the purchase if approved. Uh, the administration will also be recommending the purchase of a 2021 Ford Transit 250 high roof cargo van with lift gate uh, at tonight's meeting. And if approved, the purchase will be made using food service account funds. And finally, an update was provided on the project teams aligned to the FFO committee. And our next meeting will be March 1st. All right, thank you, John, appreciate it. Uh, next up is item 6.2, which is the first in a series of action items uh, as alluded to by John. Uh, we have an action item regarding a bus order. Mr. Bruton. Yep. Thanks, Scott. Um, tonight we are recommending um, the purchase of four brand new buses. With a little bit more detail on that, two of these buses are 65 passengers, both equipped with wheelchair lifts, and two are 77 passenger buses. Um, we are recommending that we issue that purchase order to the low bidder, Midwest Transit of Eaton Rapids, Michigan, in the amount of $399,946. And this purchase is scheduled to take place out of Series 2 bond funds. Thank you. I'll accept the motion. Make a motion uh, I mean, to no, sorry, go ahead. Make a motion to approve item 6.2 for the purchase of the buses. I'll support that. Okay, thank you. Motion by Phil, support by John. Any further discussion regarding item 6.2? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Next up, item 6.3. This is another action item regarding Chromebook purchases. Brian. Thank you. Um, we are also seeking your approval this evening to deliver a purchase order to Inacomp TSG of Southfield, Michigan for $766,350. And this is to replace the Chromebooks that are currently placed at both of our high schools. This includes 2,600 Chromebooks and it is at a cost of $294.75 each, which includes the device, uh, the management license, and also asset tagging for each. Um, the bid was procured using the state REMC bid. It does follow board purchasing policy, and this expenditure is also scheduled to occur out of bond series two funds. All right, thank you, Brian. With that, I'll accept a motion, please. I move to approve item 6.3, which is the purchase of the Chromebooks uh, as recommended by administration. I'll support that. Okay. Motion by John Lauterbach, support by John Heffield. Uh, any further discussion regarding item 6.3? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Next up, item 6.4, we have another action item. This is the JCC Technology. Brian. 
Yep, as you are aware, the Midland Public Schools does provide educational services for youth that are housed at the Midland County Juvenile Care Center. And we do receive funds from the federal government to supplement the costs at that facility. And this purchase will be utilizing Title I-D funds, which is application-based. So you do need to seek approval from the state for this purchase. And Penny and her team have worked hard to procure that approval. So this is our seeking your approval to deliver a purchase order to X-Tech Partners Incorporated of Columbus, Ohio for $47,860. And this will cover um, projectors, interactive flat screen displays, AV control systems, microphones, cameras, and installation across six separate learning spaces over at the JCC. Okay, thanks Brian. I will accept the motion please. Make a motion to approve the item 6.4 JCC technology uh, purchase. Support. Motion by Phil, support by John Lauterbach. Uh, any discussion regarding item 6.4? All in favor say aye. Hey, Scott. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Sorry, guys. Brad? Do we have any history with XTech Partners of Columbus, Ohio? Mr. Bruton? Um, I'm looking over at our technology director, and he is giving me a no. no this is our first um, work with them. But when we did vet the bid, we did post bids with each and are confident in their ability to be able to provide the scope of work that we've asked. OK. Um, what is the extent of a warranty for this work? That's something I can follow up and get you the information once uh, I look at the documentation for you. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Next up, uh, an action item. This is a board. This is a bond construction bid for the pool bleachers. This is item six point five. This is going to be Mike and Brian. I don't know who wants to take it first. Yeah, I'll take that for you, Mr. McFarland. Um, as mentioned in our last meeting, um, bid package twenty one two zero four had one final component to it. And that is the component um, that we are bringing you to you tonight, which is a replacement of the bleachers that are currently in place in, at the HH Dow High School pool. So we are recommending tonight that we award a purchase order for the replacement of those bleachers to Sturdy Steel Company of Waco, Texas for $158,880 for the bleachers themselves. We are also recommending that we accept um, a voluntary alternate to replace the top rail um, that goes along the top section of those bleachers for $17,850 and also the voluntary alternate for enhanced side picket rails for $6,200 bringing the total award for this final component of the bid package to $182,930. Okay, thank you, Brian. Uh, I will take a motion, please. I move to approve item 6.5 for the pool bleachers. Support. Support by John. Motion by Pam, support by John Lutterbach. Any further discussion regarding item 6.5? Do we have any experience with, with Sturdy Steel Company in the past? We do not. Barton Mallow does, and they do use a local uh, vendor bread that they are like the go between the, the manufacturer to a contractor more local we asked that question as well so yeah. this is a okay. atypical project being in a pool and to the all two alternates had to do with um, getting aluminum as well to prevent the corrosion in that pool um, corrosion has been a, a very much an issue in the pool area All right, thanks for the additional information, Mike. Um, all in favor of Pam's motion, say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Okay. Motion carries, thank you. Next up, we have a 
Action item, this is the item 6.6. .6. This is the food service ban recommendation. Mr. Bruton. Thank you, sir. For our final request for your approval tonight out of the FFO agenda is a recommendation to award um, a purchase order to Signature Ford Lincoln of Owasso, Michigan. That is for a 2021 Ford Transit 250 high roof cargo van, um, also enhanced with a lift gate. This is for a total price of $38,824. This vehicle is going to be assigned to our food service department with the goal of assisting them in meal delivery to schools and also to community pickup locations. Um, we sought bids through the state My Deal program, and this purchase will be made from our food service account funds. This is great. Uh, thank you, Brian. I will accept the motion for item 6.6. .6. I'll make a motion that the board uh, accept item 6.6, .6, uh, purchase of a food service van. Support. Motion by John Hatfield, support by Phil. Any further discussion regarding item 6.6? .6? Hey, Scott. Um, I yes. Hey, Scott, I don't have anything against the purchase. Um, I'm sure it's... Uh, needed and, and sounds like a great vehicle with the, with the lift gate on there. Um, all I would ask is uh, Mr. Mogenberg and or Mike or, or Brian to revisit the weight category of the vehicle that you're getting. Uh, putting the Tommy gate lift on the back of this as just being a three quarter ton and that's a pretty big van with that tall roof. Um, I would highly encourage you to go to a heavier frame if we can afford it for this purchase. No taken. Thank you. Thanks. Good point. Thanks, Brad. We yep. will explore that. Um, good point. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. 6.6 .6 passes. Thank you. Next up, we have an action item. Uh, this is for gifts totaling $5,000. Uh, Mr. Bruton, I... Yep. This does require your approval this evening. We are asking that on behalf of the Midland Public Schools that you accept a gift from the Chad William Dunn Memorial Donor Advise Fund for the total of $5,000 um, for the purpose of technology upgrades. All right. I will accept the motion. I move to approve item 6.7 and accept the gift totaling $5,000 from the Chad William Dunn Memorial Donor Advised Fund. Support. Okay. Motion by Pam, support by Phil. Any further discussion regarding item 6.7? Thank you. Other than a thank you, of course, on behalf of the board and Midland Public Schools. Okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, item 6.7 passes, thank you very much. Uh, next up, Mr. Bruton, we have item 6.8, information about gifts totaling $7,250. Thank you, sir. Um, 15 gifts are presented this evening, as you just said, totaling $7,250. And we will not take the time to read each and every single one of them as they will be acknowledged in the credits on this board meeting, but they do range for a wide variety of materials from athletic equipment from both booster clubs to support for our robotics clubs and also um, a lot of classroom support materials. So we definitely do appreciate those 15 gifts and we will acknowledge those donors and the credits to our meeting tonight. So thank you. Thank you to all of the donors for, for helping our children out. This is, uh, this is great every month. It just it keeps going and, and uh, we are so very blessed. Uh, next up, we have item seven, human resources. And we have PAM 7.1 with study committee minutes. All right. <clears throat> On February 11th, we had an HR study committee meeting. In that meeting, we discussed um, myself as being confirmed by the committee as chair of the board this year. Uh, Mr. Sherrill provided a summary of meeting of uh, meetings held prior to the upcoming bargaining season with the MCEA. Mr. Kowalski shared the number of staff retirement notices received and discussed forecasting staffing needs for the next school year. Mr. Kowalski shared current staff short shortages for bus drivers, paraprofessionals, and substitutes. Potential solutions were discussed among the committee. 
The group reviewed staff participation in the February 5th and 6th vaccination clinic hosted at Central Auditorium. And Mr. Kowalski gave an overview of how the district's DEI strategy is guiding recruitment planning. Our next HR study committee is April 8th. Okay, thanks Pam. Um, next up is item 7.2. Uh, the below staff member announced their retirement effective February 1st, 2021, and that was Veronica Boydstrom. She's a bus driver in the transportation department. Next up, we have item 7.3. Uh, this is Mr. Jaster. Thank you. Uh, the board and MPS staff extend their deepest sympathy to the family of Mrs. Mary Ann Bunting. She passed away January 4th, 2021. Uh, Mary was a kindergarten teacher for Midland Public Schools. She retired in 1991 after 22 years of service. Okay. She was my... She was my kindergarten teacher. Uh -huh. Very cool. Very cool, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have item eight. This is correspondence to and from the board. 8.1 is a list of letters from the Board of Education. Uh, item 8.2 is letters to the Board of Education, including a couple FOIA requests. Item nine is a list of scheduled activities, including uh, the remainder of our scheduled meetings for the rest of the year. And that will bring us to item number 10. This is a study discussion session. Are there any points of clarification or any further discussion regarding items we talked about tonight uh, by any of the board members before I turn the floor over to Mike? I had a question about the FOIA request from the, the, the consulting firm. Of course. What's that all about? We go in. And look. We had two, John. One is a typical uh, where they look for salary comparisons, and okay. the second one, um, I got to click on it now. Who's faster, Brian Penny? Who's got it? Uh, smart. The one from the Three Point Consulting. Just, uh, I just wanted to understand. Was that the one I hit for you? For. Yeah. That's pretty st standard. Mackinac Center will do it, um, and, and they look at salaries, and that they use it for postings out on websites and okay. for salary comparisons. You'll okay. see, it, you'll see you. that a couple times a year from a couple different groups. Okay. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. Anything else, folks? Okay. Mike, the floor is yours. Give you a little bit of a COVID update. Um, about a little over 850 of our staff um, are now vaccinated, and so that's exciting news. I think that helps uh, in a lot of different ways for all of us. A little less anxiety, uh, probably a little uh, fewer options for of quarantining as we move forward. Um, very, very much appreciate the Midland Health Department prioritizing us and the efficiency of them doing so. Many counties trailed us in getting um, their school district employees vaccinated. Um, our HR department did a great job of organizing the event, and we not only did we do our 850, but there was probably another 100 or two from the ESA or other locations that were vaccinated at our site um, doing so. We, to, as of today, if you saw our list, we had a, a low, and hopefully we can stay here. Um, we are down to 16 student or staff quarantined at this point. None of them have been quarantined because of being exposed in school. They all have been exposed outside and we have zero positive cases of staffs and students today. So let's hope that trend continues to move forward. A um, Little bit about our site logic contract for the performance bonding. We've had that contract reviewed by our legal department. We met today with the company on several proposed changes and uh, we're getting closer to that contract being completed. It'll come to you for approval at the March Board of Education meeting, um, as well, if I remember the timeline on our, our potential bond sale um, for that piece of it as well. MCA negotiations, we are be entering into, set, we've completed session three, we'll be in session four this week, um, and I would say it's going well at this point in time. We did set a graduation date, so we are, our students will graduate on June 3rd. That's all we've set at this point, um, not knowing what 
COVID may bring in the spring and restrictions as well as location. So um, COVID has played a little bit of havoc with professional baseball, which affects minor league baseball. And we've been able to confirm or not confirm uh, if we're going to be able to use the Loons uh, Stadium this year, or Dow Diamond, um, which could put us in a little bit of a predicament, which would push us potentially back into gymnasiums or another location. Uh, because our stadium as well will be under construction at that point in time. And so we'll figure that out. You know, right now, if we follow the restrictions, we couldn't have a formal graduation anyway. Well, I'm sure those restrictions, if we st uh, continue to trend in the right direction, will be lifted and give us more capacity to hold a little closer to a normal graduation. But we do not know what that's going to be. So uh, patience, please. We'll get that as we move forward. A DEI, I think Penny gave you a little bit of an update on uh, we have DeAndre on uh, week three, and he has uh, been a fresher breath of air and moving forward for all of us. Um, a little bit of a poster project um, that's going to be occurring in our classroom soon, and so we're pretty excited about that opportunity as well. The administration center with the performance bonding will be leaving this building uh, spring break, so by April we will be at Central Auditorium, which most likely will mean... March, maybe our last board meeting in here. I believe we'll make it inside this room, and then we'll hold our spring and summer meetings over at Central Auditorium until this building's completed again. So be prepared for that. And I hope March is our last Zoom meeting. After what we've been experiencing lately with Zoom, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to be back to face-to-face -face and be done with all of that. So we'll continue to move forward. I did have a discussion with the city. Um, the city is looking at potentially um, finding multi-home or multi-family homes um, and land for that and say that they are interested in East Lawn pro property and working on that. Um, no commitments, and we'll bring that forward to you, but I have been listening to them as we go along as well. That is all I have for you, Scott. All right. Thanks for the update, Mike. We appreciate it. Um, next up is a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. All right, motion, motion by Phil, support by Pam. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, we stand adjourned, everybody. Thank you so much for showing up tonight.